Hey guys, this is Devin here with Hillbilly Networks. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the RCDD again. My previous video, I honestly did not expect it to get uh, the comments it did. Um, I was actually surprised because uh, in, in my area, that's not a, a known certification by by many. Uh, actually, the only an engineer that worked for the state, I guess a network engineer he had it and I did not meet him directly it was actually my boss and a co-worker that was speaking with him and a company based out of Alabama that does fiber optic cabling across the United States they were doing some work for us and a guy that had worked there for 25 years had told me that one of the owners or both of the owners of the company the, the brothers apparently that they had it um, that's probably for them I would say they don't need that in all honesty they don't need it uh, I, I hate to say that but they don't you work in fiber optics that is such a uh, there's so much information in in doing that and designing that that a test like that uh the RCDD covers a broad uh, range, and, and it's not outside plant focused. It's it's more inside plant focused, in my opinion. So, um, but the reason why those guys probably have that uh, is because the federal government, from my understanding, as well as the U.S. military, requires that you have an RCDD on staff to sign off on the blueprints to even bid for a job whether it be copper or fiber optics and then your people that are installing the fiber uh, splicing or working with the copper you know terminating it my understanding is they also have to have those bixi uh, those technician certifications for those um, i don't know whether it's copper one and two fiber one and two or if it's higher uh, but that's my understanding of what i was told whenever i took the class uh, but to touch on the questions that you know I saw in my video, first off, you don't require the course to be able to pass the test. Um, I actually took the course and did not study the book. I just studied the book that came with the course, which is not the TVM. It's more of a study guide version, broken down version of it, and it focuses on supposedly the 80% of what the test is supposed to cover. Now, that being said, the test is going to differ from person to person. I've heard of people taking the class and going and passing it first thing. Um, my opinion is that's probably based on the fact they got lucky and got an exam that was basically covering just the stuff taught in the course because that other 20%, unless you are a genius and can retain every single little detail out of the course and out of the book, you're not going to get the full 80% of that material. So you're going to require... Uh, some of the information contained in the other 20%, which will require you to read the whole TDM in that case. Um, or maybe to just read those chapters that you didn't cover in the course. Um, but what I did is I took the course, went and took the test, I made a 55%. Um, I believe I got that 55 by averaging together uh, how I did in each area, because I don't think they give you a flat out percentage on what you did they just give you a pass fail and I think they show what you need to work on if I remember correctly or how, how well you did in each area and I think I averaged those percentages together I got 55% and then I told myself well that's only 50% from passing because my understanding is you have to make it a 70 to pass it um, honestly not 100% sure on that but I think that's what I was told at the time is that you needed at least about 70% to be able to pass it so if you go in there and you make it 50, that's actually not that bad. Um, at that point, try to figure out what you need to focus on, what you missed, and study that up, and you'd probably pass it the second time. Uh, I'll say what I did. I actually got the PDF version of the book, as well as the book, and I put that PDF version on my phone, and I honestly just read it every time I had a second to sit down. Honestly, if you're using the bathroom, read it. I mean... All of us know we do that every day, so that's a time you can read it. Uh, and, you know, depending on how hectic, I, I don't know about y'all, but if you got, you know, 
kids or wife or anything like that, then, you know, things can be crazy at home and it's, it's hard to study in those cases. So again, bathrooms. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I would say put that on your phone and read it every chance you sat down and you get away from people for even a few minutes and you can get through that book in a, a year easy that way. Probably less if you focused on hammering it out a little quicker. But unfortunately, my, my recommendation is to read the book cover to cover because that is what allows you to pass the test is the book. It's not the class. Um, the class, unfortunately, does not make you pass the exam unless you're that one guy I've read online that says they did that. Uh, everybody else says they had to read it two to three times. Now, that being said, if you're not paying for the test, I wouldn't read it two times and then go take the test. I would go ahead and read it once and then go take the test. And if you're going to take the course, I would take the course and go take the test. Again, if you're not paying, don't read the book. Just take the course, go take the test. You might get lucky and get a test that covered predominantly what you talked about in the class. And you might pass it the first time uh, without reading the book at all. If you absorbed everything in that class. Um, and then if you failed that one, then read it once like I did, then take the test again. Um, I wouldn't just go, I'm not a big fan of reading, so I would never recommend for somebody to just read a 2,000 page book twice unless they had to. So I would start off with the course, then I would read it once, and then if I had to, I'd read it a third, you know, a second time. Because I, I oftentimes wonder those people that say they read it two to three times. Did they do that and then go take it? Or did they try to take it after the first time they read it? Or did they just assume, well, this person had to read it two to three times. Surely I need to. Uh, again, I think that's based on whether or not you're paying for it for a big portion. But if you guys think about anything else about the RCDD that you want me to try to address, I can try. Uh, it's been a while since I took it. It was before COVID. Um, I'm actually coming up on the expiration of it, I think, in 2023. So I need to be working on my continuing education credits, which don't, yeah, don't forget that. You've got, I think, 45 are required for you to be able to renew it. And if it lapses, you will more than likely have to take the test again. And I don't know if anybody wants to do that. So, uh, yeah. They will start sending you emails though once you once you pass it and you'll get these little webinars and they're all one credit hours uh, that you can take uh, to be able to do that. And then there's there's a company out of New York, I think Ariskany, New York, and they it's called Fiber Instruments Sales. Uh, they actually give a course and it I got eight Bixby credits, uh, continuing education credits from taking that class. Uh, maybe it was 16. I think it was 16 actually. Anyways, it's usually one hour equals one CEC you know, as a rule of thumb. But anyways, uh, yeah, if you have any more questions or if you want me to expand on that in any way, I'd be happy to try. Um, just leave it in the comments. Thanks.